Rich, Dave, congratulations. You've made it to the final. Good job. It's a second shot at the title of Forged and Fire champion and that check for $10,000. Now we're sending you back to your home forges to create an iconic blade from history. Rich, you got any ideas? I don't have a clue. Dave, what do you want it to be? Lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see it. The Hook Sword. Nice. Long before the Hook Sword was featured in films like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, it was wielded by the Shaolin monks in ancient China. Established around 495 AD, the Shaolin Monastery was a hub of martial arts, where Buddhist monks were trained in self-defense using everything from common tools to versatile weapons like the Hook Sword. The sword's curved blade allowed the user to trip or disarm opponents. Its crescent guard could be used to slash or block blows. And if used in a pair, the swords could be linked at their hooks to increase the weapon's deadly reach. Good luck, bladesmiths. We'll see you in five days. Good luck. All right, let's get to work. Today's day one. I'm excited to be at my own shop and have a little more comfort. In my home shop, I don't have Will screaming at me every 45 minutes. <laughs> that could be an advantage, could be a disadvantage. Ooh, that's hot. Making this sword is kind of tough because it's the Swiss Army knife of swords. It's got a lot of edges, it's got a lot of blocking points. Today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the crescent part of the blade, just to work myself into it. It's probably one of the easier parts of the sword. I'll save the complicated parts for last. I like it. So day two plan of attack is gonna be simple. Get the main portion of the sword cleaned up to bare steel and then heat treat. Looks like it's coming together. I don't have a quench tank large enough to do the whole thing. I'll do two heat treats. I'll do the main post of the sword first. Oh, it's straight. And then I'll do that hook secondly. If I do it this way, the heat will just hit this part. The big concern that I've got is overheating the transition part from the hook down into the main shaft of the sword. If it's too soft, then on impact, it can inevitably bend, and uh, I don't want that. We shall see. Right now, I'm happy about the sword and I'd like to get everything heat treated by tonight. In order to get the heat treat right, I'm gonna have to make a bigger forge. So I'm gonna use these drums that I got from Breaking Bad and turn it into a heat treat forge. Ta-da! This is it. Here goes nothing. I heard weird sounds. Freaking beautiful. Not a single twister, Ben. I think those noises may have been coming from the forge barrel settling because the heat treat turned out beautiful. Today ought to be a pretty fun day. Everything's heat treated, everything's tempered. Just got to get a handle put on it, sharpen. It should cut, it should hack, it should stab, it should do whatever they're going to throw at it. I don't want to see any failure in this. It cuts. I'd say that'll work. But I'm really not looking forward to what the judges are going to put this thing up against. Slapping it up against this or cutting that, I really don't know. But you know, we're going to find out soon enough. I don't like watermelon. Today, I'm just debating on what type of handle to put on this thing. Beautiful. I ended up going with a wrap. I'm, I, I never did macrame. I got the handle wrapped. I got a little blood on my sword. As far as the sword design goes, it's kind of silly. It's got a lot of sharp edges on it. It seems a little dangerous to me. It's sharp everywhere. Well, 
It will cut. We'll see if it will kill. Blade Smiths, to test the edge and sharpness of your blade, I will slash one time on each of these tatami mats filled with rice. If they're sharp, it should cut cleanly through. Rich, you're up first. Are you ready? Heck yeah. I think I'm going to do well. The sword's sharp. There are no flaws. There's no inherent problems with it. Well, Rich, it is a light and sharp sword. You can definitely maneuver with it for close quarter, but as you can see, it can slash cleanly through these mats. It definitely will cut. It will. Good job. Dave, you're up next. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. Dave, your blade's a little bit heavier. It's sharp enough to cut, but not sharp enough to cut all the way through. Because of the weight of the weapon, when you're extending and you have a point pointing back at you, there's a little bit of concern of how you're going to be controlling the blade. But overall, sir, good job. Thank you. Rich has a point. I don't have a point yet, so it's one to zero. So I have to fare well in the second test. Dave? So, gentlemen, to test the strength of your weapon, I'm going to take two blows against our terracotta warriors here. If your blade is strong enough, it should survive the impact with minimal damage. Rich, are you ready? I am. OK. Well, Rich, wonderfully light weapon, very, very fast. You've got a little deformation on the edge, but it didn't chip. Picked up a bit of a bend, but not too far out of true. Yeah. Well done. All right, Dave, your turn. I ain't going to watch this. It's not going to happen. So uh, I'm just using my ears. I'm good with that. When I see Dave's sword shatter the terracotta dummies, I'm feeling nervous. Well, Dave, a much heavier weapon. You can see it just powered right through the terracotta with no problem whatsoever. It's still right and tight and true and everything. A little deformation, but again, we're hitting terracotta. Well done. Awesome. Rich, David. The judges have scrutinized every aspect of your work and your weapon's performances, and they've made their final decision. David, congratulations. You are the Forest and Fire champion. Good job. You're kidding, right? No, I'm not. Rich, unfortunately, your weapon did not make the cut. Rich, I love what you brought us. And during the testing, you and David ended up pretty much even. Both of your blades flexed during the Karakata strength test, but yours kept the bend in it, didn't come back to true. So that's why we're sending you home today. OK. Rich, it's time for you to surrender your weapon and leave the forge. Thanks, guys. I'm completely happy with the sword that I made, but right now I feel a little defeated. I feel a little beat up. The first thing I'm doing when I get home is I'm going to sleep. I could really use a nap. Dave came in just shy the first time you were here. Now you're a Forged and Fire champion who's also receiving a check for $10,000. How do you feel right now? Honestly, don't know right now. I'm still kind of elated at the moment. <laughs> I like the way the edge held up on that. Didn't take any chips or chunks out of it. Thank you. Well, congratulations. Now I've actually proven to myself that, yes, I can do it. And getting to go home as a champion, that's, that's pretty cool.